I stared into Gertie's teary eyes, stunned at her news about a murdered witch in our community. Aunt Bertie had hinted that other witches lived amongst us in Honeysuckle Springs, but she'd refused to tell me their names. I suspected her reason was another ploy to keep my magic in check and under her control. But things had just changed. Someone was dead. Sybil? I don't know if I've met her. Gertie's icy fingers quivered as she gripped my hand. She was young. A little reckless, but she should have had her whole life ahead of her. I placed my available hand on top of hers, sandwiching her fingers, hoping to comfort her. What happened to her? What makes you think someone murdered her? Gertie sniffed and waved away my comment. Let's not talk now. The coven is gathering, and we must go. We can discuss details there. Coven? If I went, this meant I'd finally get to know my counterparts, and I was eager to do so. But I had Bertie to worry about, too. I'm not sure I can. Bertie's not well this morning. My neighbor scoffed and withdrew her hand. You mean Theo. When will you get it straight, girl? I swallowed my uneasiness and cursed my stupidity. If I kept calling my aunt by her name and not her familiars, it was only a matter of time before someone figured things out. Of course, Theo. Your news shook me, so I'm not thinking straight. Gertie's gaze slid past me, and she pointed. Look, there's Theo right now, and she's looking fit as a fiddle, aren't you, kitty? Bertie strode forward and rubbed against my leg. When I glanced down, I could see concern radiating from her eyes. I wished we could communicate telepathically so that I'd know what she was thinking. Gertie gripped my forearm with more strength than an older lady should have. You have to go. Our kind must stick together at times like these. You may not know it, but they were all there for me and your Aunt Bertie after I discovered her body. Though we don't always get along, the witches in our coven rely on each other in times of need, and unless you want to be ostracized by the whole town, you must be there. And I need you to drive me. She'd left me no choice, and it seemed as if Bertie was feeling better. Okay, let me get dressed. With a firm nod, Gertie turned from me. Five minutes. I'll wait in your car. I scrambled toward my bedroom, suddenly wide awake with Bertie chasing after me. I'm coming too. I cast her a quick sideways glance as I tugged a shirt from a hanger in my closet and snatched the jeans that I'd worn the previous day. Are you feeling well enough? Yes, she called as she followed me down the hall to the bathroom.